Hello and welcome to Weekly MTG. Today, we have a very, very special show. We're going to do something we have never done before. We're going to run through an entire set in 60 minutes. We are going to reveal the entirety of March of the Machine, The Aftermath. All 50 cards. Some are already out there, so this is like 47 and change. Um, but it's still quite a bit. And to help me do that, actually, to do it all themselves, I'm really just kind of here. Uh, Emily Tang and Roy Graham are going to talk about the set. Now, March of the Machine, the Aftermath is very story focused. So we've got Emily and Roy, who are uh, two of the people who work on Magic Story. And we're going to go through, here's how this is going to work. we got 50-ish cards to go through. We're going to go through plane by plane. So the cards are grouped by the plane kind of on which they take place. Uh, and then Roy and Emily are going to talk a little bit about what's going on with that plane, what's going on with the characters, uh, and basically how all of this is shaking out in the aftermath. I said the thing. Um, we are going to dive right into it because we have so many cards to get through. So we're actually going to start by talking about Planeswalkers. Roy, we're going to start with you uh, because uh, a lot has happened to the Planeswalkers as people are going to see as we put them up on screen because they're, they're not Planeswalkers anymore, Roy. That's true, Blake. Uh, yeah, so as... Uh, astute readers of the story will already have um, <laughs> uh, gotten a preview of. Uh, Aftermath uh, chronicles a lot of serious changes to the multiverse, uh, not only uh, the uh, sort of emotional consequences and, and uh, loss and, and grief uh, that follows the Phyrexian invasion, but also uh, sort of metaphysical cosmic consequences that aren't fully understood yet by our characters. Um, one of the most notable ones being uh, the vast majority, it seems, of planeswalkers have uh, mysteriously lost their spark. Uh, and here we have three uh, excellent examples of that. Uh, Calyx on the left, uh, the uh, fate-driven uh, Theros Planeswalker uh, has lost his own spark. Um, Kiora, uh, the uh, uh, merfolk and uh, the like patron of Zendikar's oceans, uh, is has lost hers. And uh, Narset, uh, of course, the uh, monk and scholar of Tarkir, uh, is, like the other two, a legendary creature now rather than a Planeswalker. Uh, and, and these three are uh, great examples of planeswalkers that are, um, uh, they, they ended up on their plane. Uh, it was a pretty common thing for planeswalkers to like want to return uh, to their home during the invasion, whether that's because they were, uh, uh, felt compelled to defend their home and the people that they knew, or because they just wanted the like uh, home field advantage. Uh, so yeah. Uh, here we have four more uh, great examples of uh, former Planeswalkers turned legends. Uh, Obnixilis uh, is still on New Capenna uh, in his sort of um, ever, <laughs> ever cynical and Machiavellian way. Uh, Obnixilis uh, didn't really participate in the fight against the Phyrexians. He... Uh, was waiting to see uh, which side seemed likely to come on top. Uh, and while uh, his card says Captive Kingpin now to sort of refer to his uh, trapped status on New Capenna, he can no longer, uh, you know, planeswalk to whatever uh, world seems most ripe for the taking. Um, there has been a pretty serious uh, power vacuum created in New Capenna with a lot of the uh, leadership uh, taken by Phyrexians, so I'm sure he'll do fine uh, carving out a new niche for himself on the plane. Also, Obnixilis and getting trapped on a plane, like, name name a more legendary duo than that. Yeah, he's he's old hand at losing his spark. <laughs> he'll probably have another one, in, you know, two shakes of a lamb's tail. Uh, up next, we have uh, Samet, uh, Vizier of Naktaman. Uh, Samet is, uh, as you can see, I think from this card, uh, still on Amonkhet, uh, 
was on Amenket to help uh, resist against the Phyrexian invasion. Uh, and uh, Amenket, uh, I don't want to say too much about uh, right this minute, but um, it's a plane, of course, that's like survived already a lot of uh, tampering by powerful and malevolent interplanar forces. Um, so uh, I, I think they conversely might be uh, better prepared <laughs> to recover and, and uh, rebuild uh, in the aftermath of all that. Uh, Sarkhan, of course, another Tarkir planeswalker uh, here uh, depicted uh, at home uh, and <laughs> proudly living his uh, best life. That is that is the <laughs> happiest we've ever seen Sarkin. I know he looks so hopeful. Yeah. <laughs> Looking at his I mean, beautiful his dragon past depictions, world. the happiest we've ever seen Sarkin doesn't seem like a very right. Uh, it's a low bar, bar, but like you you feel good for the guy. Uh, yeah, still on Tarkir, of course. Very excited to be in his dragon-filled homeland. Uh, and then we have Tyvar, uh, personal uh, favorite character of mine, because um, he, was, he was one of the first characters I got to write for on Magic. Um, and uh, Tyvar, uh, it's possible he hasn't noticed he's uh, lost his spark just yet. Uh, he's... Uh, He's a, uh, not dumb, but uh, let's say he's um, easily distracted uh, and, you know, has, has plenty to do uh, in the realms of Kaldheim, uh, feasting and celebrating after uh, the uh, victory over the Phyrexians and, uh, you know, has, has a long bucket list of adventures to tick off. Uh, in his native plane. So it, it might be a minute before he even realizes he can't play his walk. All right, and then let's take a look at our last planeswalkers turned turned legendary yes. creatures, Nissa, Nahiri, and Karn. Great. Uh, yeah. So we wanted to show these last on our list of planeswalkers turned legends because... Um, uh, Nissa and Nihiri were the subjects uh, of our two, uh, two of our um, stories, uh, which you should go check out if you haven't. Uh, the aftermath stories, one of which was written by our own Emily Tang on this call, um, uh, and then Karn, of course, is is uh, present with them as well. So uh, Nissa uh, awoke from her uh, Phyrexian completion uh, on Jalfir, um, which has been. Uh, swapped back in to the multiverse, uh, trading places uh, with New Phyrexia, which is now stranded out of the time stream somewhere and uh, presumably declawed for the moment. Um, Nahiri, on the other hand, uh, awoke in uh, the rubble of the Skyclave that she had uh, been attempting to use to take over Zendikar in Elish Norn's name. Uh, so one of them woke up surrounded by like uh, friends and, and loved ones and things like that. Um, and the other woke up uh, like miles beneath the surface of the earth. <laughs> so <laughs> not great, sort of a different, um, different experiences of uh, returning to um, non-Phyrexian status. And then uh, here we have Karn uh, who if, uh, again, readers of the mom story uh, will remember that um, Karn had his body, like, extremely messed up by uh, Elish Norn and the Phyrexians. Uh, so you can see a little bit of uh, his own efforts at, at uh, reconstructing himself. Uh, Karn has, uh, you know, corrected, in a way, his, his greatest mistake uh, and now finds himself uh, making a, a new life uh, along with the uh, uh, Mirin refugees uh, on Jalfir. All right, speaking of Jalfir, let's talk about what's going on on that plane on the cards in this set. So we'll put yeah. the Jalfir cards up here. So we, we've seen Nyssa and Karn. That's just to show that they are on Jalfir currently, but what else is going on here, Roy? Mm-hmm. Yo, there's so there's quite a bit. <laughs> um, let's uh, let's start with uh, I guess the leftmost animus might uh, 
which shows uh, Nissa using her earth, uh, her nature magic to uh, restrain a creature that, um, again, readers of the story will know, uh, is not native to Jalfir. Uh, it uh, it was a, a ferocious uh, thing uh, that came through uh, what we see on the this like second from the the rightmost one here. Uh, open the way. It came through uh, a hole between worlds, uh, a portal that seems to lead somewhere across the blind eternities. Uh, and you might recognize these as uh, being similar to uh, the omen paths of Kaldheim. Uh, so this is, if this is uh, what Nissa and and company believe it to be, that's a pretty serious change. Uh, and it means that uh, it might be possible if, you know, difficult and, and limited to travel between the planes of the multiverse, even without a spark. All right. Uh, Emily, let's check in on Zendikar, which is where your story that's on the website takes place today. Yeah, so a lot of the card, the <clears throat> cards that are set on Zendikar um, that we have in Aftermath, they're focusing on what uh, Nahiri has been going through since she woke up. Uh, she's not having a nice time of it. Um, and I won't in go into more detail than that. You can read it in the story. But uh, one thing that does show up in the story and that, in the, that we see in the art here too is that uh, Zendikar is still very much in shambles. Um, Phyrexia was defeated, but that doesn't mean its presence is completely gone. Like you see in the background of Tazri's card, um, you've still got these huge chunks of Phyrexian metal everywhere. These inert uh, remnants of the uh, invasion branches that were used to pierce through the blind eternities. Um, yeah, and that's that's just one thing we wanted to show in Aftermath that Phyrexia is defeated, but the planes are clearly still damaged. They are clearly still... Uh, it's going to be a while before they return to the way they were before, if ever. All I right. Yeah. Uh, next up, we have... We'll stick with Emily for traveling to Theros. What's going on on Theros, Emily? So Theros... So Theros did pretty badly during the invasion. They got um, overrun by their own gods. Uh, thanks, Ajani. Um, he basically bad he kitty. knew all. Yeah, bad kitty. I mean, he knew all about how faith worked on Theros, and he weaponized that. <clears throat> he completed all of, uh, or he complete he he targeted the gods, believers, and then because they changed and became Phyrexians, it warped the gods too. Um, Theros's defenders were basically down to one last stand in the city of Miletus, which they thankfully managed to hold off um, and survive. But now it's, but now, I mean, a bunch of the gods are gone now. And while it's possible that they're revived in some way, if you get enough believers of them back, um, let's be honest, if you witnessed a uh, Phyrexianized Heliod just wrecking your city, how much would you still believe in him to be our god after that? Yeah, he loses so, my vote for sure. Yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, I mean, you've got this, this gap, this hole in belief that leaves space possibly for the old gods to come back in some form or for new gods to arise um, to fill in that space. Um, maybe gods who's like, who bear a resemblance to someone who's already something of a hero on Theros and played a huge part in the invasion. Who knows? Maybe. I, I also like the little detail in the deification art with uh, Elish Norn's head, headdress helmet thing there, right at the feet. Yeah, That's being cool. stabbed through by her sword. Yeah. All right. Let's move on to Tarkir. 
Emily, what's uh, happening on Tarkir and uh, Happiest Boy Alive, Sarkin? <laughs> so, I mean, Sarkin's, Sarkin's just happy to be back with his dragon. He's having a good time of it. Um, <laughs> I don't think I could say the same for Narset. Uh, she's clearly run afoul of the Dragon Lords in some way. It's been forced into exile. Um, who knows what she does next? Maybe she goes off and sets up her own monster or just goes into hiding and isolation. Uh, we'll have to wait and possibly see. Um, but I mean, during the invasion, dragons and the people they ruled over were forced to work together to keep from being overrun. And now in this post-invasion world, it's a question of whether this is sustained or if they revert back to their former ways. Like, not everyone has been happy living under dragon rule and might take advantage of things reason. to try to change. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for some reason. Who knows why? So, except for Sarkin. He's overjoyed. Yeah. I think, uh, I think Sarkin's actually very, pretty okay with losing his spark. He's just happy to be back home. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I do. There is a question in chat I want to address before we go. These, these cards are standard legal, legal. So the aftermath is... It's an odd set. It's our first sort of small release after uh, a main set release that is meant to be the, the sort of addendum to the story. It's the first time we're doing a set like this. So it, it is really interesting. There are going to be a lot of questions. If you do have questions about sort of what this set is or the makeup or anything like that, do put them in chat. Uh, it's easier if you tag at magic and I will try to answer them. Um, but in the meantime, Let's go check in on another, well, this isn't a plane, but uh, Strixhaven uh, is, is a school and a location. Let's check in on what's going on in Strixhaven, Emily. Well, okay, so, so the plane is Arcavios. So, right. um, so, so uh, I mean, what you see here is Strixhaven rebuilding. Um, like, that's a, that's a big thing we see throughout Aftermath. Everyone's trying to pick up the pieces and figure out how they're going to move forward in this in this new world that's seen some pretty some pretty drastic changes. Um, there, people are rebuilding um, on on Arcavios, literally taking advantage of this time to uh, refashion the campus. Uh, naturally, Lorehold is uh, playing a pretty big part in that, and we have members of different colleges who are joining together in the efforts as well, um, like. Plarg and Asari. And Asari was actually um, completed during the uh, during the invasion of Arcavios, but they're clearly better here. <laughs> she, she got better. <laughs> she got better. They got better. She got better. They got better. More details to come, but yeah. Or they got better. All right. Uh, Roy, let's move on to a fan favorite plane, Ravnica. What's going on on Ravnica? Yeah, um, so uh, Ravnica uh, took a pretty hard hit during the invasion. Um, the uh, we, so uh, <laughs> the the guild that Vraska targeted uh, to uh, rapidly complete and and be her sort of foot soldiers. Um, in uh, the continued invasion of the plane were the Golgari, uh, which makes a sort of twisted sort of sense because uh, she once led them in her non Phyrexian form. Uh, and once she had uh, completed a, a, you know, critical mass of them, uh, the she uh, raised the Undercity itself up into uh, the streets of Ravnica to sort of unleash uh, her Phyrexian army. Uh, so it, it was awful. It was, it was, uh, a terrible mess. Uh, and, uh, while the Golgari guild is, is still around, uh, there, I think, uh, there is probably some hard feelings, <laughs> uh, whether or not that's fair, uh, from the other guilds about their sort of outsized role as, uh, foot soldiers of the Phyrexians. Um, again, tough because they're just as much victims as anyone but uh you know uh hard feelings after 
the terrible uh, effects of war are not always fair. And then we see here Niv Mizzet, uh, who uh, is paying close attention, I'll say, to uh, the <laughs> changes that are sweeping the multiverse in the aftermath of the invasion. And now, uh, Roy, so it says Niv Mizzet Supreme. Is this just, you know, kind of a reestablishment of his status quo, or is this a new status for Niv Mizzet? Basically, has he changed, or is this same old powerful Niv Mizzet? He's um, he's still the living guild pact. Uh, he is, you know, just as much a, a important presence in Ravnica as ever. Um, he might be seizing some degree of emergency power in the immediate uh, aftermath uh, to uh, make sure that Ravnica stays uh, at least relatively stable. Uh, but uh, yeah, you'll you'll see at some point down the line. All right. Emily, we're going to go back to you. Let's check in on New Capenna. So New Capenna is, again, doing a lot of rebuilding. Um, we've, the families are actually chipping in and selflessly, question mark, offering their services to help rebuild. Um, I mean, but like how selfless are any of the families really? <laughs> and uh, as, as we saw before, Obnixilis is trapped here. Um, last time he was here, he kind of made a mess of things. And now he's not having the nicest time. With all these families who are out for his blood. Um, so we'll have to see what happens to him then. But um I mean, the angels are back as well, and it, it's been a while since they've been an active part in running the city, and I think they finally decided that uh, it's, it's been a little too long. Families have been running things for a little, for longer than they should now, and it's time to really crack down and start cleaning up the place. And Rocco's starting... A food truck business. Yeah. I mean, that's the evolution of every good restaurateur these days. <laughs> All right. Now let's head to uh, Kamagawa. Emily, back to you again. So Kamagawa, a <clears throat> lot of it is just everyone's trying to take advantage of this chaos to further their own agendas. Um, whether like there's you get the reckoners who are all trying to get a leg up or leave for good unsuccessfully sometimes um, you get demons the oni who are uh, who are uh, taking advantage of probably uh, Kyodai not being not watching the their their prison in the spirit realm nearly as closely as before and breaking through. Um, yeah, Hidetsugu, uh, like Hidetsugu was released during the invasion, but clearly he's not the only one to, mm -hmm. to think like, oh, this is a great time to come over and, you know, get back to my old ways. <laughs> um, and we also have Nashi here, um, who's sort of taken on the mantle of Tamio, his adopted mother. Um, Tamio was uh, Phyrexianized and killed during the invasion, but she managed to save a recording of her non Phyrexianized self in one of her scrolls. So that's who, uh, Nashi, that's what Nashi has with him. Um, as he goes around and he's continuing her, her work, her story circle, going around, um, collecting stories the way she used to. Yeah, that flavor text is nice. It's, it's It makes you feel a little bit nice after brutal Tamio death. All right, let's continue on. We're, we're going in rebel, reverse alphabetical order, in case anyone can't tell. So we're going to move on to Kaldheim. Still with you, Emily. All right. So, I mean, Kaldheim, uh, this aftermath was sort of a Ragnarok for, or, or sorry, the, the invasion was sort of a Ragnarok for them. Um, 
but what happens what happens after you survive through Ragnarok you throw a throw a wild party you celebrate you tell you you tell stories of all the awesome things you did during the fight um and I say if you survive but you know even if you're dead you can uh you can continue on the party it doesn't matter as long as you were in the fight and you've got an epic tale of your feats to tell um we also see i mean we see the uh the world tree starting to regrow as well uh during the invasion the it got heavily um targeted by phyrexia and to keep it out of the phyrexian's hands the call timers uh set fire to their own world tree but you know, you can't, it's, it's really hard to permanently destroy this giant cosmic structure. So it's, it's starting to regrow. It's, uh, clearly enough to reconnect at least some of Kaltheim's realms already. Mm -hmm. Um, if Tyvar's card is any indication, I mean, they're, they're about, they're clearly, the elves are clearly setting out to challenge the gods again. They used to be, they, cause the elves used to be the gods of this realm and um as if one epic war wasn't enough they're all set to launch another one well, the first one was so fun <laughs> if one war is good why not another <laughs> all right next up let's travel over to kaladesh emily what's going on on kaladesh well kaladesh is like deep into rebuilding they've um a lot of a lot of vital structures got damaged uh, during the invasion. The Aetherflux reservoirs reservoir was targeted um, and probably really heavily damaged as well. And so here we see all this with uh, Pia Nalar, who now has the title of consul of of a consul. Um, she was previously labeled a renegade by the consulate before, but clearly. Things have turned around. Um, looks a lot like the consulate's pre-invasion authority. It's not nearly as absolute as it used to be. Uh, and I wouldn't be surprised if there are some continuing changes to the power dynamics on Kaladesh going forward. Fair enough. All right, Roy, let's travel to Ixalan. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so uh, in right before Ixalan was sort of the victim of some some pretty bad timing, uh, the Sun Empire, uh, led by uh, the Emperor, uh, were had had geared up and and built this vast navy uh, to launch a counter invasion of of Torazan and uh, you know sail across uh, the great ocean that uh, divides them and, and hit the vampires where they live and invade their, you know, churches and steeples and Gothic castles and all that. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, that great Navy was uh, just about setting out when the Phyrexian invasion uh, began and uh, all of those ships were lost. And, and you know, the, the crew and the, the soldiers and all of that were, were uh, lost with them. Uh, so... Uh, what what ended up uh, uh, saving uh, Ixalan in uh, in many ways was the actions of of Watley at uh, uh, Orozka, uh, the uh, city uh, from which uh, she could uh, summon the uh, elder dinosaurs to help uh, beat back the invaders. Um, you can see uh, on a lot of these cards there was some some pretty serious damage though uh, to Ixalan. Uh, we've mostly seen the consequences uh, in the Sun Empire on this set, uh, but uh, you know the plane it itself was uh, like many uh, had some some pretty serious uh, spanners thrown into the various uh, engines of power uh, and. Uh, I think the return to Ixalan, uh, which is coming in not too long from now, uh, the Lost Caverns uh, of Ixalan mm -hmm. will show uh, 
a lot of that a lot of that change. Uh, additionally, uh, in all of the uh, the chaos and the upheaval and everything, uh, they may have uh, found something of significance uh, hidden underneath the cities of the Sun Empire. All right. Yeah. And and to to Roy's point, we are going to be returning to Ixalan soon, sooner than most of these planes. So we're going to get to see the fallout coming up. All right. Let's check in on Innistrad, a plane that knows a thing or two about terrible, terrible battles and invasions. Uh, all right. What's going on on Innistrad, Emily? I mean, so Innistrad during the invasion was... It's, so, it, I mean, Innistrad is a monster-infested world. Um, the difference was just these monsters were from outside the plane, and now that they're gone, we are back to the monsters that we know. Uh, but, um, yeah, I mean, vampires are going to vampire all the until the end of time. Vampire's uh, <laughs> gonna vampire. Uh, Sigarda seems to be doing pretty well, though. Yeah, Sigarda, Sigarda's actually, like, so she's um, still somehow channeling Halo, um, which is actually, mm. the humans might be getting a bit of a leg up on Innistra now, now that she's become this sort of, she's she was already sort of leading the angels before to protect the humans, but now that she's this, she's become this channel for continuing channel for uh, Halo, this magical uh, angel energy. Um, it seems like there could be some, a little, a little light at the end of the tunnel for the humans here, or at least, or at least a, a chance to, you know, not be so heavily hunted. Yeah. Maybe only lightly hunted. Speaking of hunting humans, Roy, how's Akoria doing? <laughs> uh, not great, Blake. <laughs> um, so uh, you you can see here on the the rightmost card, Dranith ruins. Uh, uh, Dranith uh, was essentially erased from the map on Ikoria. Uh, the the issues of um, a legion of completed giant monsters uh, were, were a, a little too much uh, for the human uh, defenders of the city to solve. Um, uh, and uh, uh, readers of the story, again, will uh, remember that uh, Jarena uh, was taken up. Yeah, that was my story. Uh, it was a lot of fun to write. Uh, uh, Jarena uh, has taken up her father's mantle as a uh, general. Uh, and, and also her mantle as uh, doing things that are maybe morally questionable in what she sees as the service of the greater good, um, uh, and led most of the survivors from Dranith to uh, Lava Brink, where they uh, held, held the line at least until uh, Phyrexia was beaten elsewhere. All right. Uh, Roy, we will stick with you, and let's check in on Eldraine. Oh, yeah. Uh, so we're, we're going to Eldraine real soon. Uh, so I, I don't want to say too much because, um, other than to, to say that, you know, we, we see a little <laughs> bit in Aftermath, and uh, that is, the, the, the effects of the invasion uh are very profound on Eldraine and, and really change uh, the, the plane at its core. Um, uh, you know, the realms were hit very hard. Uh, uh, the, or the realm was hit very hard, rather. Um, and the courts were uh, devastated, honestly. Uh, and, and we're going to be seeing a lot of that in Wilds of Eldraine. Uh, so, uh, I won't get too into it, but you can see here uh, the Kenrith's royal funeral card uh, to commemorate the loss of uh, King Kenrith and, and Queen Linden uh, to uh, beloved and and also very effective monarchs uh, for the plane. Uh, without their leadership, uh, rebuilding is is going to be a lot tougher, and uh, there are 
I can tell you this, uh, there will be uh, competing visions for what a future for Eldrain should look like. Yeah. And if you want to learn more about Eldrain, here's my plug for the preview panel at MagicCon Minneapolis. So Roy is actually going to be on that panel with myself oh, and yeah. Gavin Verhey and um, Matt Tabak. And among the many things we're going to be talking about, we are going to be talking about an early peek at Wilds of Eldrain and a little bit more. We're going to go a little bit further into the story than Roy went today. So uh, if you're interested in that, uh, if you're going to MagicCon Minneapolis, that panel is Friday at 2 p.m. If you're not going to MagicCon Minneapolis, don't worry. We will post the panel on YouTube immediately as soon as it's done processing after we're done talking. Uh, so yeah, Eldrain fans, stay tuned. Uh, next up, uh, second to last, as far as the planes are concerned, we this is where we flipped the alphabetical order so we can end on kind of the big one. Uh, Emily, tell us how Amonkhet is doing. So Amonkhet <clears throat> is, they're, they were, um, they were, I would say they were in the middle of, they were already in the middle of trying to rebuild their plane after, you know, the whole Nickel Bullis thing. Uh, and then <laughs> that whole nickel bolus thing. That, that whole nickel bolus thing happened. And then what should happen? But the Phyrexian invasion, which pretty much wiped out all the hard work they'd been doing before. So now they're back to square one. Um, it's all all hands on board. Everyone is just pitching in, trying to get themselves back to a place where, I mean, just trying to rebuild themselves. Um, yep. All right. Uh, speaking of rebuilding, another plane that is no stranger to rebuilding. And the final plane we are going to go over before we talk a little bit about the set structure, uh, Dominaria. Roy, tell us a bit about Dominaria. Oh, yeah. Uh, so Dominaria is a huge plane with uh, an enormous amount of uh, like lore, uh, various cultures, civilizations, all of that stuff. So this is, uh, uh, just understand an extremely limited look at the, the many, uh, the many ways that the, the denizens of Dominaria have responded to the invasion. But, uh, on these cards, we see, uh, the Telerian colleges, uh, uh, excising the society of Mishra from their ranks. Um, uh, as well as uh, you see uh, those those little scamps over in Urborg uh, uh, taking uh, the Phyrexian salvage uh, and and seeing what they can do with it. Um, I, personally, I wouldn't really mess with um, uh, you know uh, metal plucked from intradimensional uh, cyborg zombie horrors, but they're all. I think they're like it takes largely all sorts. <laughs> it, it does. It does. Uh, who am I to tell them how to live their lives? Um, and then we also have Danitha here, who uh, has uh, had a, a pretty hard run of it. Uh, Dominaria, in general, has been fighting the Phyrexians for like, obviously forever, deep in, in their history, has been invaded multiple times by this threat. Uh, but also just this most recent invasion has gone on longer for Dominaria than most other planes because Shieldred uh, was transported uh, to Dominaria ahead of time via the planner bridge and did a bunch of like early completing and sleeper agenting and all of that. So as part of that, uh, Danitha has finally gotten an opportunity to stop fighting uh, and uh, has taken over uh, her father, Aaron Capatian's uh, uh, duties as head of house commission. All right. Well, that takes us through all of the planes and most of the set. Uh, we have a couple cards to still talk about. Uh, before we do that, we are going to have time for questions. So if you have questions, feel free to put them in chat and tag them as at magic. Uh, of note, I have been watching chat. I'm not ignoring you all, uh, but Roy and Emily here, uh, they know about story. So if you want to know about the Aftermath story, if you want hints on what's coming up, those types of questions, they're happy to answer them. Um, if you have questions about the structure of the set, what's found in what pack, I'm help, uh, happy to help you through that. Anything else that is outside of that, I hear you, appreciate your questions, uh, but we uh, that's kind of outside the scope of this stream. So. 
We're going to talk to Roy and Emily about the story. We'll focus on that. We'll talk a little bit about the aftermath set. Um, but otherwise, happy to answer any questions. Okay, before we get to that, uh, let's take a look. There are a couple promos in this set. So, Joel Real, Voice of Zalfir, is the Buy a Box promo. So, we've seen a couple versions of that. And then Spark Rupture. You might have caught this on Daily MTG earlier today. So, this is uh, kind of the story moment about planeswalkers losing their spark and becoming creatures. Roy, is there anything you want to add to that about the bundle promo? Uh, only that um, I, I think Mark Rosewater actually said this in, in his article today. Um, we, uh, we don't want to tell you, we don't want to give you a full list of, of who, who's de-sparked and uh, who's kept their own. Uh, uh, I think that'll be more fun to find out as we go. All right. Okay, and then Last thing before we get to questions. So there is a good deal of booster fun in this set. Now, if you head to dailymtg.com right now, uh, there is an article call, up called Collecting March of the Machine, The Aftermath, that will walk you through the details and where to find everything. But these are the different booster fun treatments in this set. So there is only one borderless card, that is Spark Rupture. Uh, the explanation there is that Spark Rupture comes from the Blind Eternities. So most of the booster fun in this set is based around the second one there, which is Planar. So similar to March of the Machine, most cards get a planar treatment, which shows what plane they take place on. Uh, Spark Rupture doesn't take place on any plane, so it's all about what's happening uh, in the Blind Attorneys and throughout the multiverse. There are, of course, extended art cards, as we do in, or in every set. Those can be found in collector boosters. Foil etched cards are also available. And then there are the retro frame. And of note, the retro frame is sort of a stand-in for the planar frame for anything taking place on Zulfir. So that's why Karn there is getting that retro frame treatment. Okay, so let's jump into questions. Um, here, Emily, this is a question for you because I believe it's in your story today. Where's it, Johnny? Uh, currently... Like, okay, so he's actually as okay. So, as far as the story is concerned, he's uh, off wandering, being sad cat somewhere. Um, but <laughs> hmm. uh, I don't know, Roy. Do you have anything to say about where Johnny is right now? Johnny is is not. Uh... Ajani was Phyrexian for longer than most of uh, the other evangels of Elish Norn, uh, and did terrible things uh, during his his time. You know, out of out of control of his own body, obviously, but but still, uh, I think we got a glimpse in into the in the Nissa and the Hiri stories uh, that suggested they they remember clearly everything that they did as Phyrexians. Uh, this, so this sits really badly with his own internal, like yeah. with his with his morals, with his mm -hmm. personality. It's just um, so yes. So he's not he's not ready to rejoin his his friends and and in fact, like people that he used to mentor and everything. He's he needs to he needs to come to terms with what he did on his own. So that is happening tried... somewhere off the computers. Well, well, he did try to. Uh come to terms with it with the help of someone else who'd been through a similar situation, who was in a similar situation. Um, he did. He did that didn't really that. go exactly as he'd hoped. <laughs> Read today's story on dailymtg.com. Um, while we're on the whereabouts of Planeswalkers, um, so obviously we've left some of this open. We haven't checked in with every Planeswalker, uh, but I am going to ask the question. Feel free to give the coy answer. Uh, is there any news on Jace or Vraska? We'll, we'll pair those together since they were last seen together. Uh, great question. Uh, so Vraska, uh, uh, attentive readers uh, will have last seen Vraska at the end of the Ravnica side story uh, for March of the Machine. Uh, she was... Uh, uh, crushed under some rubble after uh, being 
horribly electrocuted by a thing that a, a blood oil machine that Ral made. Not good. Uh, <laughs> and uh, but her body was never recovered mysteriously. Uh, Jace, similarly, uh, we last saw in the March of the Machine story, uh, having been completed, but uh, we don't know where uh, he was sent as one of Norn's evangels. Uh, so his whereabouts are also unknown. Okay. Uh, we did get a question. Uh, since, since so many Planeswalkers are losing their spark, question, is this the end of Planeswalker cards? I can answer that one. No. Planeswalker cards are not going away. Um, you'll notice that, for example, Chandra kept her spark. Uh, but exactly what that's going to look like, you'll have to kind of stay tuned a little bit. Uh, next one, let's go with a um, question for either of you, uh, heading back to Theros. Which gods were completed, and will we ever see those cards, or are they fine now? So, so what happened to the, who are the completed gods, what happened to them? that we know of as of yet. Emily, Just thinking about how much we could uh, say, yeah. Yeah. Um, well, I mean, there's Heliod for sure. Mm -hmm. And we did see Erebos on a card as well. Mm -hmm. um, and we got some flavor text that hinted at other gods. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that's all I can say about who definitively has been Phyrexianized, <laughs> as for whether they'll get better or um, whether they're gone for good, that's going to, I think that's going to depend a lot on how, how their believers or whatever, whoever's left of their believers um, continue to think about them or if that change or if that changes like mm -hmm. we we might get them back but in an altered form uh we might get them back exactly the way they were we might not we we might see them replace entirely with a new deity mm -hmm. one that sprung from you know uh the new thoughts and beliefs and faith of the people of theros all right um, let's see. Da, 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 da. Let's go. With, uh, here's a popular question. Is Tybalt dead? Uh, so last we saw Tybalt, uh, he had, uh, while battling Tyvar, uh, on a precariously high bridge in New Phyrexia, he was, uh, thrown off it, uh, and I believe landed with a metallic crunch somewhere out of sight. Um, so last we saw him, he was on New Phyrexia. Uh, he wasn't doing great, <laughs> but uh, is was probably less dead than some some people. Um, uh, but more dead than others. <laughs> more dead than others, certainly. <laughs> uh, I think. Uh, it would be quite the act of reappearance if uh, Tybalt managed to uh, de-Phyrexianize himself, uh, recover from a long fall, and also slip off New Phyrexia before it phased out of the timeline. Uh, but he is also, he's a squirmy one. So uh, if anyone could pull it off, it'd probably be Tybalt. All right, how about... Um... Okay, question about Sarkin. Uh, Sarkin in Aftermath is blue-red. In the past, we've seen him as blue-red-green. Is there a particular story reason why he's dropped green, or uh, is there any anything going on there? Um, I'm, I'm not sure I have an answer for that one. Okay, that's fair. Like... We're, I'm throwing these questions out to, to Emily and Roy, but we have to we have to know that there's a lot of stuff that's being set up for future sets, um, especially uh, stuff that's nearby, and and some of it we can't we can't quite get into, but we'll we'll answer. And, what some we of can. it has also. I mean, some of it is yeah. also like um, it's it's been a while, like internally since mm -hmm. we have worked on aftermath, so a lot of details uh, we don't necessarily retain all the details of why we made some decisions. <laughs> Yep. I, I actually feel like I do have uh, an answer for this, but it's, oh, it's not one that I can 
tell anybody. Okay. <laughs> 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 uh let's see i can't wait to tell you all in in two years or three or four years. or however many it's gonna be <laughs> and that's and that's the challenge with a lot of this a lot of the story stuff is you know if if there's a, a hole in the story a thing we haven't told you that seems like it should be there there's probably a reason for it um let's see how about a lot of good questions in chat uh bu -bu 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 -bu. Let's see. Uh, we haven't seen or heard from Soren throughout all of this, and and we know Soren's around doing Soren things. Is there any update on Soren or what he was up to this whole time? So I'm pretty sure Soren was actually on Innistrad fighting. We just we it's it's a huge marathon was a huge uh, yeah sorry well. March Mission was a huge site, covered a bunch of plates, so we didn't necessarily um, have the space to show everyone or every single moment we wanted. Um, but I believe we did manage to slip a mention uh, of him into the uh, into the Innistrad side story. Mm -hmm. yeah. Which was focused instead on uh, uh, Gisa and, and Geralt, um, uh, which that story, if you haven't checked it out, it's, it's really fun. Uh, it's it's a lovely little bit of like goofiness in the middle of all of the the darkness of the invasion, mm -hmm. um, uh, and I, we wouldn't have we wouldn't have been able to get that if we had spent that story slot um, checking in on our favorite vampire edge lord. So, <laughs> um, I saw this question a bit earlier that I'll take on. So there was a question about now that the the omen paths are opening up travel between the planes. Will this lead to crossover with universes beyond sets? No, uh, it will not. They That is the magic multiverse. Uh, they are not opening up into other universes that don't, that don't work that way. Um, okay, I, we've, gotten, we've talked a little bit about this, but I, I think it's worth going back since it was literally the first thing we talked about, Roy, um, and, and expanding if you can, but um, can you talk a little bit more about what we know so far about how the planeswalkers who were desparked lost their spark and and why it didn't kill them <clears throat> yeah sure um so uh as i've said just to to uh, reiterate i guess um the process by which this happened is is still mysterious to our characters uh so there's a lot they don't know um what they what they do know is that uh the process was gradual uh, that uh, it wasn't um, violent uh, in the way that, like, the Elder Spell was uh, mm -hmm. when it, uh, to, like, tore sparks from people's bodies and, and their souls with it <laughs> in that instance. That didn't happen. Uh, Desparked Planeswalkers uh, have, have kept their, you know, immaterial soul uh, in however, uh, however that happened. Mm -hmm. um, uh, it's only that the, the spark itself seems to have uh, gradually left their body. Um, whether uh, that spark could be found again, whether uh, where that spark might have gone, uh, because, you know, conservation of energy is a thing in the magic multiverse also. Um, uh, those are, are questions that we still don't have. Um, uh we can tell you that uh, uh, the uh, we saw in in the Nissa story, um, uh, Koth and Karn uh, and Teferi and Nissa have all lost their spark. Um, Chandra and Ajani seem to have kept theirs, uh, and Nihiri had sort of a special case where she had uh, infused uh, her spark into the Skyclave to help power it. Uh, when she was a Phyrexian, and then, um, <laughs> oops, a little clumsiness uh, in the Nahiri side story, and, and uh, it, the vessel containing it shattered. Um, so she lost her spark in an entirely special and unique way. Hmm. All right, uh, next question, and we're, we're running out of time, but I'll, I'll get to what I can. Uh, this is clearly from someone who knows their lore. Uh, so for either of you, is the Glimmer Void gone? And if yes, will Hex Gold be scarce in case a new Phyrexian invasion comes? 
this, uh, we, we can't really touch on this right now. Deal. All right. Yeah. Fair enough. <laughs> there's a, there's a uh, lot so of that. I'll, All I'll right. Say, I'll say the changes, the changes, uh, to, um, like Mirrodin itself, New Phyrexia is, is out of the timeline. Um, uh, but Jalfir seems to have inherited some things uh, from it. Uh, you know, the five sons of Mirrodin are still in the, the sky above mm-hmm. um, Jalfir now. So uh, any anything beyond that in terms of like world building details for Jalfir, I don't think we want to get into right now. Makes sense. All right. Last question. Uh and, and it's, a lot of people want to know about the whereabouts of Planeswalkers, so we'll see if you can say anything about this one. Uh, but can you say anything about Tezzeret? Uh, we, I can say when we last saw him. Sure. <laughs> uh, which was uh, hopping from uh, uh, world to world, planeswalking uh, place to place, at the end of um, All Will Be One. Uh, desperately trying to find somewhere that is was not currently being invaded by the Phyrexians. Um, he resolved ultimately to uh, sort of go to ground uh, and wait for his chance uh, to uh, strike back and, and, and uh, you know, hit them where they least expect it. Um, so that's the last time we saw him. Sounds All like right. he's, he sounds like someone was seriously regretting his life choices in the moment. He, oh, yeah, he, I don't think he even got far enough towards like regretting <laughs> those choices. He's like, man, who who did all this? <laughs> <laughs> all right, we are out of time. I want to thank Emily and Roy for talking story and walking us through March of the Machine, the aftermath. Uh, March of the Machine, the aftermath releases May twelfth. Uh, in local game stores around the world. Uh, there is in- more information on dailymtg.com today if you want to read the story by Emily Tang, if you want to learn about the various treatments and what cards are in what slots in March of the Machine at the Aftermath Boosters. Uh, additionally, I'd be remiss if I didn't say again that uh, this Friday at 2 p.m. Central Time, 2 p.m. Local Time, at MagicCon Minneapolis, we are going to be hosting the preview panel. And the preview panel is going to have a ton of information. We are um, really making these special for attendees and people who watch at home afterwards. We are going to talk Wilds of Eldraine. We are going to talk Doctor Who. We are going to talk The Lord of the Rings, Tales of Middle Earth. We are going to talk upcoming arena things. We are going to talk Commander Masters. And yes, that includes preview cards for some of those, not all of them, uh, but we are going to be showing preview cards, we're going to be talking some mechanics, we're going to be showing art and lore, and it's a whole thing. You definitely don't want to miss it. Uh, 2 p.m. on the main stage Friday at MagicCon Minneapolis, or if you are at home or not coming on Friday, it will be posted on YouTube immediately as soon as it's done uploading. So uh, we hope to see you there. Next week, Weekly MTG is off because we will be traveling back from MagicCon Minneapolis. Uh, But the week after that, we'll be back uh, with uh, some stuff to talk about, which I can't share right now, but we'll we'll talk about it later. Uh, Thank you for tuning in. Thank you, Emily. Thank you, Roy. And we will see you later.